10 beekeeping jobs for September. Hello, I'm Griffiths. Welcome to Winning Griffith. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living, and we do reviews as well. Now it's taking us to that time of month again. It's the 1st of September, and here are your 10 jobs for the month. Job number one, and this is very important. If you haven't taken the honey off yet, now is the time to do that. That honey needs to come off this month because we have to treat for Aurora. Now if you're not sure how to take the honey off, click on the video up there and I can show you four ways to take the honey off the hives. Number two, now this brings us to Varora treatments. Now that we're in September, some of the treatments are not going to be that effective because the temperature is going to drop. I would recommend using Apivar at this time of month. Um, you don't have to rely on a warm weather at all for that to work. That works very effectively. Click on the link above there to see how to use Apivar. Number three, heft your hives. And if they haven't got enough honey, then feed them with sugar syrup at this time of year. Two to one sugar and water that you mix yourself is fine or even better, purpose-made bee syrup. Your bees will thank you for it. Now, your bees need between 15 and 20 kilos of stores for the winter. So now is your last chance to make sure that the bees can get enough feed into the hive if they need it. Number four, give your apiary its last cut. Now, cut the hedges, cut the grass, get the apiary looking very uh, clean, spick and span. So when you go there later on in the winter, you can see everything. Nothing's hidden by old uh, dead bramble or vegetation. You can see the bees, you can see the hives clearly and plainly, and this will help you out massively in the winter when you go down there. Now, personally, I think a well-kept apiary reduces the chance of mice entering your hives. Mice don't like low grass because they're at risk when they can when they're walking through low grass, birds of prey, etc., can get at them like that. They can't hide very well. So I would have said that you be uh, that your hives are at less of a risk of getting uh, mouse damage or mouse infestation if your apiaries are, are kept clean and tidy and the grass is kept low. Little trick to remember there. Number five. Now wasps are still a massive problem at this time of year. You've got to make sure that the wasps can get to your hives, especially small, young nukes or hives that are just building up again. The wasps will easily kill those hives. Make sure you stop the wasps getting to those bees. Click on the video over there to see how you can reduce the chance of wasps killing your hives. Number six. Now, this is the last chance that you've got to fix problem hives. Now it's too late to fix hives by giving them a frame of eggs. We just haven't got the time anymore or the drones to mate new queens. So if your hive is queenless now, the only thing you can do is buy a new queen, introduce a new queen. Click on the link below there to see how I introduce queens into the hive. Another thing you can do is unite a queenless colony to a queen right colony. Personally, I don't like doing that. I prefer to take the loss there now and not potentially infect a, a strong colony with weak or potentially diseased bees. Because you've got to work out why are these hives not right? Why are they failing? Are they failing purely because they haven't made a queen and they're queenless? Then there's no disease risk there. Or if they're very poorly and weak, why is that? You've got to diagnose the problem there. If you, if you think that anything is wrong with the hive disease-wise, do not unite it. If it's a problem queen-wise and they've got enough bees in there, I'd be more tempted to buy a queen in and introduce a queen rather than trying to unite hives.
if they're not strong enough to take a queen and they're looking very poorly, potentially some kind of disease, then I wouldn't take any chances with those bees. I'd shake them out, take that box back indoors, melt the frames down, sterilize the box and be done with it there and then. Number seven, now there's no need for weekly inspections anymore. Huge amount of uh, work has taken off you this month. The bees are definitely not going to swarm this month. I say definitely, 99.9% .9 chance that, that they're not going to swarm now. So no need to do weekly inspections. Number eight, now put your reducers in and mouse guards if you've got them. We want to put the hive reducer in, that potentially can stop mice, but by putting the mouse guard on, you're making sure mice can't go in the hive and potentially kill the bees. Now, how does the mice kill the bees? They actually wait till the hive or the bees cluster really tight. They sneak in the hive, then they eat the honey and the stores. Now, as winter moves on, the bees will move from frame to frame, eating the honey. They'll come to the section where the mouse has been and there'll be no food there whatsoever. Then the bees will starve. So very important that the mice don't get into the hive. Number nine, now remove all the queen excluders. If you haven't done this yet, you don't need queen excluders on the hives now because what potentially can happen if you've got a super on the hive that you're leaving on for the bees to eat, the bees may slip up through the queen excluder to get to that honey, but the queen will be left behind under the queen excluder and she could potentially die of cold. So take the queen excluder out. If the bees want to move up into the super, then there's nothing stopping the queen from going up. And finally, here's an important tip. Now that all the supers are off the hives and you've cut the grass, everything's looking nice and clean and tidy, inspect your hive stands. Are there any rot in your hive stands? Because if there are, now is the time to know about it and over winter is the time to fix that problem. So take a look at the hive stands now. Is everything looking secure, looking sound? They're not going to fail because you don't want to be fixing those hive stands in the summer when you've got multiple supers on the hives. Now is the time to check if they need repairing and then plan that into your winter work. Well, that's it for September. There was a year 10 jobs for the month. Now, this is pretty much the last month where we've actually got a lot of things to do in the April and B-wise. From this month onwards, the work moves into the workshop. So this is a good time and a bad time of year. It's good that the work is reducing. Sad that we're not going to be doing bee work, but if you're like me, you're quite glad to not be doing bee work for the next few months. It's nice to have that off season, nice to have that break. And winter will be over and done with before you know it, and we'll be back on the bees in spring. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoy it. And don't forget, if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I try my best to upload new videos every week. Thanks for watching.